Hello my Soka universe. I'm wearing this Lusk jersey for a good reason because the video will be mainly about the Lusk affair, Lusk gate, um, on how you can really mishandle the corona crisis but since it's a corona related video let's go in. We already have the Bundesliga back. Let's see when will the next leagues come back and I'm most concerned now about the remaining of the top five that is Spain which will get on the 11th of June and it starts with the Seville Derby that's an enticing matchup then you realize it's without spectators still I think uh, it's a good it's a good one to uh, get back but it will probably be the least exciting Seville Derby at least from the get-go but then on the other hand uh, could be a good game. I don't know none how much more how they want to do it. Uh, I know they want to um, They want to try to play every day or so, but let's see uh, how this will go The Premier League is very very likely to come back on the 17th of June um, That sounds also promising. Uh, I uh, honestly don't know exactly how they will they play now in their own stadiums. I know that the mayor of Liverpool does not want to uh, that Liverpool plays at Anfield because they could clinch their championship there and many people he doesn't want to have that. Is it English short-sightedness or whatever uh, or really knowledge? Yes, people might be gathering but I'm sure that many know now it's not a good idea so I don't know the situation. I only see that of all all the other leagues, the least talks are usually coming from the Premier League or the least good news, where it, there seems to be no clear way forward. But at least we they have now agreed. 17th of June, the Premier League will uh, is scheduled to restart, which is big news. Now Italy is a complete different scenario. I heard 20th of June, which is when Switzerland now agreed to come back. Mm, but there's also they also don't know how they're gonna do it yet uh there's also they are the league that has the most games left to play which might cause some trouble so there has been talk about playoffs uh but then the broadcaster i think sky italia is not very happy with that which i wouldn't really understand because this would be the most exciting thing hey <laughs> i have a uh, playoff style you know just a mini league uh, as i made videos 40 and 5 5 tier have them all play one, each other other ones and you get actually quite some exciting because every game really will count there soccer but uh the proposal that i read now is that there will be no championship awarded because it's too tight to call uh the race uh the top four would go in the champions league which i actually would say is the correct decision because they are above everyone else the next three go into Europa League and then only two teams will get relegated let's see about that but yeah those are the sort of good news let's go to at least for me bad news which is what Lusk has been doing and I think I have to start the story from the very beginning on where we were when the coronavirus came to really understand all the bits and pieces First of all, uh, I made a last video ahead of the United Clash, kind of saying, you know, uh, we have not been the greatest club. We have to claim the famous to be the first team from Vienna to not to win the Austrian Championship. Great. However, um, there is a certain thing that whenever Lask is doing well, there's always something preventing them from really going all the way. Uh, so all history but we're not the most successful club at least in the top flight so the season that we were having is arguably the best season in history even the including the championship season because that championship we rather won because the others crumbled not because we were uh, so dominant we were only first place only once the entire season on the last day of the season so admittedly probably a lucky champ championship so with Lusk having this big rise I mean Six years ago we were playing in the amateur levels uh, and now we are uh, challenging for the championship in Austria. This is unprecedented and a really, really big rise on a very solid foundation. The ownership that took over in 2013 basically saved Lusk, put it on the solid foundation which is 
as long as I'm fine, we never had a solid financial foundation, did an amazing job in building and actually, uh, although it is fast, it has been an organic build uh, to get to the point. Yes, they have made some errors along the way, uh, but you know, largely you can overlook this if there's the success there and there is clearly a concept. Maybe uh, many fans are not very happy that they are a little bit too much copying the Red Bull way, so that's maybe not the nicest thing to have. Um, and you know, there were some other failings and maybe the biggest one is kind of that we're not playing in Linz, but that they were blindsided by the city of Linz, so uh, let's see where this is going. The one thing, since they are in the Bond Bundesliga, that our president, who is actually uh, in the one of the higher instances of the Austrian League um, there, um, has continuously been a little bit pissing at the legs, especially Rapid, when they, with their fans, made trouble and he was not afraid to challenge them and he became kind of um, not a very well-regarded uh, figure by most Rapid fans, but on the other side, um, we love him for that. Um, that he loves the limelight, that he probably says a little bit too much to uh, too much and too often uh, is a given. So, on the last day of the regular season, on the last two rounds, uh, Lusk, and I need to also say that we were in first place, six points ahead of the uh, of Salzburg, which is a sensation. And I give you the table, it's the lower table here. Um, and basically, uh, very well placed, but with two a rather serious injury, of at least one of which I have to say is a quite serious one to one of our uh, attacking players going in a uh, season ending. I think the other one for two Potsman also season ending. So, um, but Lask has been playing the most games in the league. I think they just played 12 in Europe, they made it to the semi finals in, in, in the cup, and they had since August two games a week except for international breaks. So, Corona came and Lusk was the first team to be really affected in Aust Austria because within two days uh, of the match it was said this match cannot happen against Manchester United cannot happen um, with spectators as we behind closed doors. President not happy because he felt blindsided by the government. Um, game was played, 5-0 loss at home, blah blah blah. Um, and he, he then a few days later said yeah I was wrong and uh, it was good to say, I, I was wrong to say that the government did the right thing. I see that now and in order to see that we're taking this seriously, all our employees uh, will not work uh, for the Red Cross. We pay them, they work for the Red Cross. Great, absolutely uh, great doing so. Now, uh, while the discussion is how do we continue, Lusk took a rather passive role because, you know, you're the leader, we have played the main, uh, there would be a good way to award a championship and Lusk was first place and I was saying that uh, I think we should have cancelled the championship. The trouble was that most clubs in the um, league were actively pushing to have it continued. Um, Salzburg for obvious reasons because they want to become champions. Uh, others saying, yeah, uh, we want to limit our losses because we need to get the TV money to at least curb a little bit the, uh, the losses. And there were some some talks that only three, the maximum four clubs could survive the Corona crisis if no games are played. How serious that is, I cannot judge. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe not. But yeah, they took a passive role, they got really attacked, especially under, under the president, uh, especially from the teams from Vienna. Then Austria actually made it well through the Corona crisis. Um, I think at Easter, everything was slowly opening up and there was even talks that uh, Austria could be the first league to resume play. And then they came in the sport, yeah, we can allow um, games, uh, Spec, uh, without spectators and, and, and so on, that should be clear. And then came the big lim limitation that if you want to do sport, you have to keep at least one meter distance and uh, if you do a team sport, you have to keep two meters distance. Big blow. You can hold, hold, only hold training sessions in small groups and they shouldn't be touching more or less. Big blow to any plans that the Austrian League can start up. Um, 
Lusk was among the first to say, okay, now that we allow, we allow a lot of testing. They were also the first to go back to the pitch, although they have been rather passive that we don't necessarily need to, but they were the first to go back to the pitch. And then kind of made this press conference where, yeah, all these distance rules were not really followed and there shouldn't be any people there. It was, it was already a weird start, but at least it was a sign. Yeah, we are the first ones. We are ready. Get cracking. They also said that um, employees and uh, season ticket holders can have corona tests uh, and they were t really going, we test our players daily because at the beginning they had some uh, positive results that then turned two days out later negative and so on. So um, they were taking it, at least in that sense, serious to make sure that everyone is kind of healthy. The Austrian League, they also said that this two meter uh, distance rule is unfair by uh, footballers, uh, team sports uh, singled out um, and they even went to the court of, um, of, the, of to the constitutional court and um, kind of said this cannot, cannot be, of course there is no result yet, but um, that was kind of the first time where I thought, ah, they're not taking, yeah. I don't really like that. And then uh tough negotiations with the government where uh yeah the government it's not the most pressing thing is to get soccer back on track but um there was a huge push towards that and it was a really a hard act we thought mid to may then but then it became yeah we're starting now uh, at the beginning of june that we can start and exactly around that time um Rumors came that maybe the Lusk is doing some training sessions that are violating the rules set forth by the government. Then came the news that a Lusk reported break into the police um, for espionage because a, cam a camera was left and then it all hell breaks loose. A video is shown, the Lusk is shown to clearly have a full on contact training session. Right on the time when just the Bundesliga had gotten the okay, we can play. And that this goes against government rules was a big blow. And I have to say, uh, when I saw that, as I, I have to say, my first reaction was, I can't believe it, my second reaction was actually not a neg negative one. I thought, I like that kind of game, gamesmanship to try to get the edge. I was thinking more New England Patriots, although I really hate that team. But I always admired that their gamesmanship. There was something that I actually more admired than uh, hated. So for that reason, yeah, not too unhappy. But then the outcry came, big foul on Austrian soccer. And under that pressure, Lask didn't say anything at first. But uh, under the pressure from the public, I think uh, they thought that they need to make a statement. They held a press conference and rather curiously the president was not in the center usually the president or the coach but mostly it's the president front and center if there's anything less related now this time it was the manager who kind of said yeah the coach said we will have a really tough program 10 games in five weeks he's worried about the injuries and you know we need those training sessions and 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 so on and since they have this strict testing program and no one has tested negative uh, positive uh, can't we just have at least some sessions well they admitted they had four the president says he didn't know about anything that might be doubtful and they said yeah it was stupid from us to do that uh, my apologies it wasn't uh, then they said it is not no need to get an advantage over the competition but if you think about it if you do that of course you get an ever so slight advantage over the comp 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 competition. Um, they did a stupid thing and they gotta get punished for that. I totally agree with that. There needs, 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 needs to be punishment. Uh, and I think a hefty, hefty, hefty fine I thought would be uh, the most re reasonable thing. This was my first reaction. Now, the Bundesliga said this falls under the fair play paragraph. And uh, this means that the range of punishments ranges from up to 75,000 fine euros to points deductions to forced relegation to being expelled from the league. Then, of course, 
now that this is there, all the teams were really uh, wanting to go for a points deduction and the points deduction of course so that they at least are ahead of LASK. Namely the teams of Vienna were really really going for it and kind of yeah let's give it back to LASK who has been pissing at our legs uh, for the last few years. Salzburg also uh, being devastated and so on and so forth. The big thing in the press conference though was that the president he didn't want to he didn't want to just apologize, although everyone else said we're gonna follow whatever the league will do, we will support their process, blah blah blah, we will fully cooperate. He couldn't leave it at that, he needed to say, you know what, we have evidence, photographs, where other teams are also doing what we have done. <sighs> yes, they pulled out some photos, but when it got to the negotiations, it was clear that, um, yeah, this is not gonna go anywhere. What's even more is that the damage was done with that statement and I think everyone, and you could see it was Paul, it was Paul, everyone was kind of shocked at first. Um, many people for um, demanding severe punishment and I think the most damning for me was that the president of the Austrian Soccer Federation um, went out and he claimed a huge punishment and I have to say yes he can make have his opinion but um, I think he should be neutral in that and from that point it was clear to me yeah this will be a point deduction many um, experts said so up to 12 points which I thought <clears throat> so yeah I was absolutely afraid of the um, trial and yeah yesterday it came down six points and 75,000 euros. And the problem is the 75,000 euros. If there was be up to 1 million euros uh, fine, I think a fine would have done. Now, the, the uh, protest comment, comedy said they don't want to impact the championship too much. Uh, so basically they kept Lusk in the running for, for, for the title, but with six points deduction for th after three points being ahead of Salzburg, now they are three points behind. That's already huge. What's more is if the championship gets abandoned, the six points are still applied to the original table, where the Lask and Salzburg are equal le level of points, but Salzburg wins a goal difference. So basically, they kind of force now Lask's hand. Lask, of course, appeals immediately, and I honestly have to say, I did not like that, because now the whole process might mean that we get a final verdict after the Bundesliga season is done. That is not something that you want to have. I I don't think the fine is proper. I would say three points. Yeah, that's three points. And I would have given a half, half the fine, but the hands were bound there. I, I, under, I understand it. I even would have said if Lask, if you make Lask like uh, donate a million euros to um, amateur soccer in Austria, and that that's to kind of make up for it, I think it will be fine. I am not okay with the points deduction because this is, Points is something that you gain on sporting merit. I know there are points deductions if you don't meet financial regulations and so on. I just, I, it doesn't feel right. But I knew that there will be a points deduction coming. I honestly think uh, to keep, to not impact the championship too much, I would have given it all three points. And I guess this is where the appeal is going. Um, yeah. I'm afraid if the appeal is going that they might come to the conclusion that we have to say, um, we have to punish him more severely. I think it's a PR disaster for Lusk. Lusk was one team that was really riding on a high with that. You completely got rid of that. Although I think as soon as there's some success coming, most people will forget about that. Um, only the um, most elephantine people in elephantine brain will get to there. So I'm less worried about that to be honest and rather be successful and have that so i'm fine with that but the outcry is last last fans and sympathizers say oh this is way too hefty i'm among them all other most others say oh this is way too little which kind of tells me probably that the comedy got it right so yeah what do you think is the proper pun punishment for this offense i 
I'm willing, I totally admit I'm not, no, no, I'm not run that one. So let me, let me know what you think, but I think this is the big Corona crisis for Lusk. And I have to say they totally mishandled it. They deserve to, they deserve pun, pun, punishment, definitely. But I would give it more on the monetary side than anywhere else, especially given how lenient teams were, the fans caused abandonment of games and so on. Um, how lenient the league was there. But then again, this was the Vienna teams who have a law, big lobby. Anyway, I want to hear your opinion on that. Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you.